Now in this segment, we're going to discuss a very fantastic theory and that is the Earth's magnetism or geomagnetism. Now again, we'll try to be as precise as possible. To the similar tone of geographic north and geographic south, we also have a magnetic north and magnetic south. So next time onwards, you got to understand whenever a north pole of the compass needle points to any direction, that direction is the magnetic north and not the geographical north. So there is a magnetic field effect due to earth. We are not interested the reason behind it. But if we try to mathematically model it, you can always assume a huge and a long bar magnet extending right from magnetic south to magnetic north and that works as the axis and you need to understand the south pole of this huge imaginary magnet is at the magnetic north and the north pole of this huge imaginary magnet is at the magnetic south. Remember if I say the north pole of the compass points upward it means that magnet, the huge magnet's south pole must be up. That's the reason why the compass's north pole would point in that direction. We interpret north and south all solely as the direction shown by the compass. So wherever the compass's north pole shows, we call that as the north. But that earth's huge imaginary south pole is present at that point. Now let's try to dig deeper into this concept. So just try to understand on the basis of those illustration, perhaps now you've understood, you've got a lot of idea here. So here is the earth treating it to be nice round sphere. And we in fact have two meridian. One is the geographical meridian, other is the magnetic meridian. So this is the geographical meridian and here is the geographic north and here is the geographic south. But as we know, the magnetic north and geographic north would not coincide. So they lie at something different location. So right here, let me show. Here is the magnetic north and the magnetic south. So here is the magnetic north and this is magnetic south. Now, in order to understand all these things, what we do is that, as we have already said, we take an imaginary magnet and that particular magnet can be shown in this way, just for the sake of reference. So here is that magnet whose south pole is there and whose north pole is here. Now, the most important thing that I would be expecting from you is to have a very clear cut visualization of the field lines due to the magnet. Now to show the field lines due to the magnet, you know, the field lines will come from north and eventually go into south. So this is how it goes. Similarly, here the other side in the same way you can go there. Now the first and foremost thing that you need to understand is if you are located here, next time when I say that I am at south, I would be implying as magnetic south. Now everything is in the magnetic plane. When I say equator, it would be the magnetic equator. Did you see, if you are standing at a location at the south pole, the magnetic field is coming vertically up. Don't say this as vertically down, because it's vertically up all for the reason it is against the center. And if you are at North Pole, the magnetic field is vertically down. So say this location where I'm standing, if it is North Pole, the magnetic field is going straight down. And if this is South Pole, the magnetic field is going straight up. Now, did you realize, just try to imagine in a three dimensional way, the journey of this field line as it starts from South Pole and finally reaches the North, you could see if this is the south pole, it would be straight up. At the southern hemisphere, the field would be something like this, inclined above the horizontal. 
By the time it reaches equator, it would be horizontal, parallel to the ground surface. At the northern hemisphere, inclined down. And by the time it reaches the North Pole, it would go straight down to the Earth. So this is how you can realize the field line comes from here and gets into this. So just imagine the journey starting from up, inclined upwards, parallel, then down, then goes perfectly into the ground. Now these two cases would be very properly dealt and we are going to quantify the angles and they are namely the declination and depth. So let's see one by one. First we'll talk about the declination part. Now to understand the declination, you could see at any given point, suppose you are at the point on the Earth's surface. So there are two poles. One is the magnetic north, other is the geographic north. And just think of the two planes. One is the geographical meridian, other is the magnetic meridian. They are the planes passing through respective geographical axis and magnetic axis. The angle between these two planes, that's called as declination. So just try to see, I've shown it here distinctly with the green one. If you don't want to go with the other part, that's fine, but just try to understand. Someone standing here, the vertical is there. This is the plane pointing towards geographical north. So this will be the geographical meridian. And this is another plane, which is towards magnetic north. So this is the magnetic meridian. And the angle between these two planes, that is what we call as the declination at this point. And this declination varies from location to location. And just a thought for you, try to find the location where the declination would be zero. There exists point on the Earth's surface. Now, after that, let's try to understand the next thing, which is the inclination and depth. So declination is one thing, and inclination depth is another thing. Let's try to understand that. First of all, try to see the definition, and then we'll come back. The first thing is say, as I said, Imagine we are at the southern hemisphere. So how would the magnetic field appear at this location? It would not be horizontal. It would be slightly going up. So there would be an angle that the magnetic field will make with the horizontal. And this angle is called as the inclination. While imagine we are at the northern hemisphere. So at the northern hemisphere, the magnetic field will be below. And the angle it makes with the horizontal, that's called as depth. So actually, the angle that the magnetic field makes with horizontal, that's either called as the inclination or depth. Remember, in order to measure inclination and depth, you got to be at the magnetic meridian, because that's a place where the Earth's magnetic field would be present. We measure this depth by a device called as a depth circle, and it's something like the same compass needle. Instead of keeping it in a horizontal plane, you keep it in a vertical plane. That becomes a depth circle. But while measuring the depth, care should be taken. The depth circle first needs to be brought in the magnetic meridian. There are techniques for that, but here it's a case. Typically, this is the location where I've shown of the northern hemisphere. And just try to see. The magnetic field due to Earth will concentrate on the magnetic meridian. We will not talk about the geographical meridian. The declination part, that has already been discussed. And here you could see, there is the given situation. Look, there is the magnetic field due to Earth. Look, this one. And the angle it makes with the horizontal is delta. That is the depth. So one is the declination, the other is the depth. You got to understand that. And after that, we will consider now the horizontal and vertical component of the earth field. Remember, now we have understood about the depth and in order to measure the depth, we need to go at the magnetic meridian. So this is the magnetic meridian. And just look here. This is the direction along which the earth's field is present. And that's making an angle delta. Now resolve this field along the horizontal, along the vertical. So here the vertical component is straight 
going down to the ground and the horizontal component is along the ground and shooting towards the magnetic north. Resolving this B, B cos delta, B sin delta would be respectively called as the horizontal and vertical component. And once you know the horizontal and vertical, you can calculate the total earth's magnetic field as in there and the delta depth tan of that is always the ratio of BV to BH. Now there is an interesting thing. I particularly stressed on one thing that in order to measure the depth, you got to go at the magnetic meridian. But what if, if I stay at other plane apart from the magnetic meridian, so will the depth circle show deflection? Oh yes, but that deflection would not be equal to depth and that is called as the apparent depth. In the next segment, I am going to talk about the apparent depth and the numericals corresponding to depth. Let's check that.